wonderful. Oh, God. And they're 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 working they're working out their own salvation without fear and trembling or I don't know what they're doing. I don't know what they're doing. Um, women, this this is this is interesting. Women are re woman is redefined as the derivative or the indirect image of God. She is ontologically subordinate or of lesser essence than man because she is taken from Adam's substance. And if you read in those excerpts that I've given you, Palmer basically says, man gets married and he reabsorbs his rib. His language is almost exactly like that. And that's why I say we don't need the Council on Biblical Manhood and Womanhood to tell us this stuff. It was written in 1876. And I don't know where he cribbed his stuff from. <laughs> it's, uh, it's disturbing. So women are of lesser essence, lesser authority, certainly. And it all, this all unfolds. They ascribe to primogeniture. Now, many people do. It's just that uh, by creation order, man um, is it, rules and reigns over women or is uh, in authority over woman. And it argues a male hierarchy, but it's based upon this creation mandate. They expand upon this as well. And Bruce Ware and John MacArthur teach that sin actually entered mankind through Eve and not through Adam. And basically she was incapable of uh, bearing the full responsibility and consequences of her sin, so it fell to Adam, not because of his own disobedience, <clears throat> excuse me, disobedience, but uh, because of headship. Therefore, all women are given to deception and they are more obligated to accept blame. Oh, it gets better, or worse. Um, there's this mysterious salvific man Man is seen as an earthly savior for his family, both in the physical and, his, and in the natural. Women are to remain at home and to remain under the covering of the patriarch. Don't send your daughters off to college. They'll be dwelling under a roof without a patriarch, and they'll be exposed. There's all this fear, and, uh, you know, that your daughters will be exposed, particularly with <coughs> And in the spiritual sense, and this is the most widely held belief in patriarchy. Husbands believe that they sanctify their wives based on a misreading of Ephesians 5, 25 and 20 through 27. It says, husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church. Lay down your life for them. But then it goes on to say that Jesus takes his church bride, washes her with the water of the word, uh, sanctifies her, presents her holy and blameless. Well, they're arguing that they can sanctify women or at least govern the sanctification process, and, and certainly by extension any women under their authority. Um, now, there are implications for this in the Eucharist. They have their own, there are many family integrated churches and there are homeschooling oriented churches. In some of these churches, they practice pedo communion, but they also practice, well, women are not allowed to partake of the host in and of themselves. It must be um, administered to them by a patriarch because it is his duty to withhold the host from them in the event they are deemed and partaking unworthily. Wow. Now, there are, two, there are two ways around this. If I go to church without my husband and I have some sons with me, I can take communion. Well, I can get an, a, a normative family to adopt me so that I can get a patriarch to assume the responsibility that my husband would normally have. But if he's not there, I can have one of my sons get the host. It can be a two-year-old, as long as they're old enough to carry the host. <laughs> okay. And again, patriocentric marriage, primary symbolism is atomic. I was told that the symbolism of Christ and the church bride was incomplete, that it must include a patriarchal ruling over his wife with discipline. And I said, okay, give me a proof text for that one. Yeah. And they said, Hebrews 12. Hebrews 12. And I thought perhaps this was a unique experience, but I've talked to a few people who have had the same experience. And a friend of mine was actually thrown off of a discussion group that uh, was originally started by CBMW. <coughs> Uh, because she said, this, the Hebrews 12 does not defend this at all. And again, so there's this role of submitted sonship that the woman is relegated to. She's almost a child 
of her husband. And on to militant fecundity. All right. It is the duty of Christians to bear large families full of godly seed, to populate the earth and bring forth uh, what God intended us to have, particularly in America. That's how we're going to get our Christian America. People have said, um, I've read on blogs where people have said, salvation comes through the womb and not the cross. Rather, and people who are babies that are born into these Christian families, now, mind you, they have to be the appropriate covenant community, which is borrowed from Calvinism, they, are, they enjoy a higher status. You're better to be born into a Christian family and raised as a Christian than to be saved from outside the culture. You're kind of second class. And they don't direct any evangelical efforts there. There's, and um, I call this spiritual eugenics. And I thought perhaps this was language that was too strong, but when you consider that there's very little effort directed towards the lost in our culture, um, it's absolutely appropriate. He even thought it was passive, but there's nothing passive about it. Um, if you look in the back of your excerpts, there's an imprecatory prayer in there written by Doug Wilson. And he was discussing in his book, Mother Kirk, he was discussing the pro-life movement. And he said, we Christians need to get tough. God's elect are certainly under the covenant, um, but the non-elect hate God and they should die. And we should pray that the children of the heathen die and rejoice. And uh, cites one of the psalms that says, the children of the blessed is he who dashes the heads of the lost on the rocks. This, <laughs> this is perhaps the most disturbing, horrible, anti-Christian thing I have ever heard. And called, certainly it's called Christian. There's also some strange reproductive practices. Of course, women are saved through childbirth. Contraception is uh, discouraged, but I believe that it is prohibited by the um, social reinforcement and the, you know, the hidden messages in the group, the, the real doctrine that's un, unwritten and unspoken sometimes. Home births are preferred. Now, I'm a registered nurse. I'm actually, I hold a doctorate in natural health. I'm trained in the use of herbs and natural products to facilitate delivery. Um, I'm also trained in the non-pharmacological management for pain for home births. Love home births. There is a mystical practice in some of the pockets of patriarchy where the midwives leave the room so that the husband is there to have this mystical experience and receive his baby and be the first person to hold the, the infant. And very telling about the group, there are some men that without any kind of training perform episiotomies on their wives. Uh, some notable people, in fact. And uh, enough of that. <laughs> I'll get up on another soapbox. Now, I'd like to look at Vision Forum for the practices, because they give a prototypical framework for what most people follow. However, I did consider Michael Cruz and his household codes very similar to what they teach in patriarchy. And Michael Cruz outright admits that he derives a lot of these things from Aristotle's book one of politics and the paterfamilias and just the appropriate way to conduct a family. And I'll skip that. Doug Phillips is a trained lawyer, but he set up his own parachurch organization and what essentially looks like it could operate as a denomination. It is a church planting organization and it has a registry for these family integrated churches. In 2003, in two, about 2001, they released what they called the tenets of biblical patriarchy. But take note that in 2003, they were, for a short time had a version that declared any homeschooling, any alternative to homeschooling, such as Christian school, a sin, a sin. Non-normative roles for women were sins, such as women being trained outside the home, women working outside the home. This didn't go over so well. And of course, if you've called Vision Forum, they tell you this never existed. I have it at home under lock and key. Um, now, they basically, the spheres of dominion, only men are to be in the public square. Women are only to be in the sphere of the home. Therefore, women are not permitted to vote, because that would be functioned in the public sphere. 